What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. We're on a new project here and as you can see we've got like six, eight inches of snow on the ground and we have to install our deck footings. We're gonna show you how we do that with Goliath Tech helical piles. This is not gonna be a problem. We got all the shovelers here so stay tuned. Make sure you hit subscribe. Let's go. Before we get too much further into the helical pile installation, I want to talk to you about the design of this project. We've got a two tier deck. The top tier is going to have a huge roof structure over the whole thing. It's going to be screened in perfect amount of space for an outdoor living room, a bar area. We're also going to have a banquette that's going to go against the house next to that sliding door. You're going to step out of the screen porch down onto the open deck. That's where they're gonna have a grill, possibly a griddle. And then we're also gonna do a built-in banquette against the house there just for some extra utilitarian counter space. That's all gonna lead down to a patio with a gas fire pit, really cool design, and finish it all off with some landscaping. This is gonna be a total transformation. Can't wait to get started. All right, so uh, we need this whole line shoveled out. Look at that, look, look, at, where my, look at where my mark was. That was just freestyle. It's like right in, it's like perfect. Wow. So we've obviously got a bunch of snow on the ground here. What we're gonna wanna do first is shovel out all of our layout marks so that we can spray paint those, get an exact location, and then we can get down to business. We'll show you some of the tricks that they're gonna use to get these installed, even though the ground's frozen. So we gotta get to work here. <coughs> Maybe like an inch or two of frozen ground, and then it just punches through. No so, problem. Yeah. We're gonna have a couple maybe tips and tricks for uh, getting them in the ground. In the snow or just in general? Either one. Well, I mean, in the snow particularly, as far as keeping location, yep. what we'll do is, you know, we do the standard nails, Yep. Uh, but then it's so easy to lose the nails in the snow, so yep. we'll, we'll paint, you know, a path from the nail to the location. There you paint. go. Okay. So, what about punching through that first a little bit of frost? Just honestly, just patience. Patience, just, just standard procedure. Just put her down and let her rip. Know, let her rip. Put some down pressure with the machine on it, and it'll maybe take another one or two rotations. But it's it's nothing. You know, thankfully we're not in Alaska where you've got feet with permafrost. So. That's true. Then we might have maybe a little bit of a problem. Maybe not a problem. Just a little more patience required, but. It's gonna be a breeze, look at this. Snow covered, not a problem. Concrete, you'd be waiting a couple months here. Oh, what? Hey, I do have my sunglasses. They're in my pocket. Nice. Sweet. Got Nick, he's got the, uh, he's running quarterback today. He's got the hand warmer. <laughs> nice though? Oh man. Wait, where'd mm -hmm. your hands go? I can't see. I know, I don't even have them anymore. This is camouflage. Nothing on my sleeves, nothing on my hands. <sighs> wow. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> Looks like I know. You just push it with my blade? Sure. It may damage it, but I mean. <laughs> That's okay. All We're right. building a new one. <laughs> hey, this little ground level deck here. As you can see, uh, no match for us. We flipped it right over. Now he's just going to use the machine and uh, get it out of our way. Old footings, moving old decks. Whatever get the job done. All right, so the deck's gonna be 20 feet wide. I really like how the plans were done on this one. We used a new architect to do these plans, 
and I'm gonna show you some of the ways that they laid this out to make it easier for us not only to lay it out to install the footings, but also to build on top of it, you know, make it easier to square up later. The other critical thing about these plans is it's gonna be freestanding for our larger structure. So we have a beam two feet away from the house. And because that is in the overdig zone of the original foundation, we need those helical piles because we need to go down past that overdig. So those are gonna need extensions. And if you just did a regular concrete footing there, you'd be sitting on top of backfill and you wouldn't know it until you had some problems down the road. The really cool thing about how this deck is designed is it makes our layout super easy. You'll notice that all of the footings are within the footprint of our deck. The joist cantilever past the beams at least two feet. And then we also have the beams cantilevering past the last footing. So, so the perimeter footings on each deck are gonna be roughly two feet inside of our outer perimeter. So that allows us to frame this deck. Then we can square it all up and our footing location doesn't have to be as precise because everything is gonna hang over that. All right, so we have two sections of deck here. We've got covered section, which is gonna be the main part. It's 20 by 24. And then we've got a smaller section that's open off to the side. It's gonna be a little bit lower. So two separate decks. What we need to do on our top deck, the main deck, is build this freestanding because we don't wanna have a step out of the house. We wanna have it flush, but you can't install a structural ledger to this bump out because you can see it's cantilevered off of the foundation. We need to have a line of footings right at the front of this bump out where it cantilevers and uh, that way we can go right up underneath the door threshold have that nice smooth transition over here we're gonna be stepping down and we don't need to have that row at the house because we can attach to our concrete foundation it's a solid concrete poured wall so we can use wedge anchors on that and uh, be good to go So right now we're setting up the collapsible square across the foundation, and then we're gonna pull a string line out just as a reference. They're setting it right up at the edge of our deck, which is 20 feet, but our footings are gonna be inside of that. So we're just gonna have that as our reference point, measure back inside of it. And I've made three marks here for our lines of footings that are gonna run this way. And we've just measured out distance from the house. So pretty soon we'll be able to connect all those lines and have a, uh, a layout for them to follow. get into some frequently asked questions about helical piles and one that we get all the time is how much load can each one carry and does that affect the spacing of the helical piles so depending on the application their engineer is going to spec what size helix you need and what size pile and they can range from very small loads to huge loads so if you have an application where you don't want a lot of helical piles they can spec a larger helix and a larger pile that will accommodate that. And it's all gonna be spec'd by their engineer so you know you got the right information. Next thing we're gonna talk about is cost. People say all the time, aren't they so much more expensive than concrete footings? They are a few hundred dollars installed per pile, but the huge savings that you're gonna have here is on the time and the efficiency. We can sub these out, they can be installed right away. We don't have to wait for a footing inspection and then we don't have to wait for that concrete to cure before we start building. So when we get helical piles installed, within a few hours, we can start framing. Whereas if we did concrete, we'd have to dig the hole, wait for the inspector to come out. Hopefully it doesn't rain in between, then pour concrete, wait for it to cure. And best case scenario, we're framing on day three, whereas helical piles, we're framing in a few hours. But Sean, what if I have rocky soil in my area? If you do have rocky soil, it's not gonna be a problem. The franchisee that's in your area is gonna be used to dealing with that soil type. They have tools in their arsenal that will take care of that. They can run augers in to displace large rocks. And a lot of times the helix itself is gonna displace that rock. And if it happens to kick it off layout an inch or so, which can sometimes happen with large rocks, 
They have offset brackets that will put your bracket exactly where it needs to be so it will not be a problem. slopes away so like over there we're probably pretty close to good so this but, is uh, the where the bottom the top of your deck is going yep right there okay. yeah so we need to be 22 below that fair enough sweet sounds good thank you all right it's pretty cold out here it's the middle of the winter it's like early january it's mid-january yeah i guess it's probably mid-january uh, got like another 30 days of this right after february it starts to like we get we get it's like it's like uh it's like uh we're getting out of it sure yeah anyway right now it's pretty cold we got snow on the ground we got all that kind of stuff not a problem for our glide tech piles, piles. piles but uh let me give some tips how, how do you keep warm out here what do you like to wear i like to use the traditional overall bib setup so for me it lets you stay warm and what's really nice about it is a lot of old timers like you keep them in your truck you, you fold them under your seat, but I just wear sweatpants underneath them. <laughs> Keeps me nice and comfortable, but you gotta commit to wearing these because you might look like a chooch on the drive side. Yeah, you definitely will. But yeah, other than that, one of these guys, a little turtle, turtle fur. That's called a, a baklava. No, it's not. That's no, a baklava. They are a game changer for me because I feel like just my cheeks and my face get cold. I'm not really a glove guy when we're working, but I like to buy like a nice, like weatherproof style glove. It's got uh, some fuzzies in there. It's nice, but you lose a little dexterity in your hands. Other than that, that's about it. I'm kind of uh, it's not my first winter. Been doing this a while, almost 25 years. And what's the number one tip? Heats in the tools. There you go. Heats, heats in, in the, the tools. tools. See, he's a little bit How do more. You stay warm? He's a little bit more old school. I'm a little more new school. I like the high high tech performance layers. So what I got is uh, well, I got some. Fleece line pants from Costco. Love these freaking things. Yeah. Wear them all the time. I got so a pair. good. So good. And then underneath that, I got a, a pair of Under Armour uh, tights. Tights. So you got you got those multiple layers. That's what's important. Then I wear two pairs of socks. Why? Because I feel like the the I got the thick wool ones. I only got one pair on. I got the thick wool ones, but they make my feet sweat. Okay. And then they feel a little wet. And then what do you wear? What's the other? So pair? then I just got a regular pair of socks underneath. Like actual socks? Nah. Two. So uh, then I got the performance layers up top. I got this bad boy. Should it be tight? Uh, well, I got a shirt underneath of that too. Yeah. I got like a layer underneath so how many that. Articles of clothing are you wearing? A bunch. Your and spots. then I got <laughs> I got uh, my sweatshirt, and then I got I got my my overcoat. So uh, that's how I say. And then a hat. You always need a hat. So uh, that's how I like to stay warm. Or go in the van. Well, the van's not here. Uh, so. That's it. So uh, there's some tips. I mean, you can always, the winter. always be like this. Keep the digits warm. Yeah. We're gonna be They're like all clear. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> smiling. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> We're going to get into a couple more frequently asked questions. And one we get a lot is how deep do they have to go? So the pile is about seven feet long. A lot of times they will just install the entire thing. But if they hit some troublesome soil and they have that torque rating and it's easier to just stop and cut it off and put the pile head on, they can do that as long as the helix is below the frost line for that area. So in our area, that is about 36 inches. So if they get beyond 36 inches and they achieve that torque rating that is required, they can cut that pile and install the head good to go. Now with an install like this, we've been asked, will that snow on the ground impact the torque rating and artificially give it a higher number because it's going into frozen ground? No, because only the top few inches of the ground are frozen here. Once they punch through that, all of that torque is coming from the helix at the bottom. So they're gonna be below the frost line no matter where they're installed. And that's how you know the frozen ground is never gonna impact that torque rating and artificially give you a higher number. The last one we have here is how close can you install the helical piles to the house foundation? 
That's gonna vary a little bit depending on the installer and the type of equipment that they have, but our installer that we're using here can install nine inches away from the house with no problem. So keep that in mind as you're laying things out. Nine or so inches is how close you can get to the house. Now, if that didn't answer all your questions, leave them down in the comments and we'll be sure to get them answered for you. If we can. Galvanizer going past the pile. Galvanizer. That might be another question that we get. What do you do with the cut ends of the pile? We coat that and then you'll also see. Ah. Heavy, this is some heavy duty stuff here. Check it out. This cap is gonna go over top of it, so there's not gonna be a whole lot of water intrusion onto there, but still wanna coat the top of that fresh cut. Make sure it's locked in for justice. All of our footings are installed. They're just cutting down the last couple, getting them to the height that we need. But that's how easy it is to install these Glidetech helical piles. Even when there's snow on the ground, the ground is frozen, no problem at all. Right now it's about one o'clock. We got here about 8.15. They got here about 8.45. Long lunch and everything is one o'clock. 15 footings done, installed, finished. Super easy. And they're installed to the height that we need. So it's gonna make framing so much easier. So this is one of the reasons that we absolutely love Goliath Tech. Makes our job 10 times easier. So check it out. Make sure you hit subscribe. And until next time, this has been Premier Outdoor Living.